Yeah, they're depositing a bunch of money right now. They're depositing everything right now. Performance is solid, man. Yo, what's up guys? Hope all is well. Happy 2024. Today we're gonna be building a $500 budget gaming PC. This will be a full guide. If you're a beginner, you've come to the right place. Really excited to build this PC quickly because I've started to get addicted to gaming. But anyways, guys, I'm also really pumped for this build because the price point, 500, it's more accessible to everyone. And it's always interesting to see how well cheaper systems are gonna perform. We will find out and we will not be disappointed. I already know how it's gonna perform. It's gonna be awesome for the money. So how do we do things? We break the build guides into three parts. So first we're going to go over all the parts and their prices second we're going to jump into the build guide and i'm going to be showing you guys how to build it the whole way through from start to finish if you've never built a pc before i don't care you watch this video you will then have the confidence to build your first rig and then third at the end the fun 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 part we're going to put our system to the test against all current popular titles esports and some triple a's we're going to frag it up it's a montage at the end it's really fun before we jump into the build guide we've already covered a bunch of different budgets here on the channel higher than 500 i was going to say lower than 500 but no actually 500 is the lowest budget we've done in ever yeah 500 is as low as we go but yeah guys let's go over our parts so i'll go ahead and start off with the graphics card we are going to go with an amd card this is the amd radeon rx 6400 this card doesn't even need extra power which means we don't need to hook up an actual power cable from the power supply to it it runs with the power directly from the board anyways the price of this card is up on the screen right now it's a nice looking card two fans for the video ports this card gives us one hdmi port and one display port cable no back plate but it's all good. Nice card. And we will find out at the end how this thing performs. What CPU are we going to pair it with? The i3-12100F. It comes with a stock heatsink. This is a really good processor for the money. Coming in at only this price right here, it's like very, very, very affordable. And it seriously gets the job done. What's cool about this as well is that we are going to be pairing it with this motherboard by MSI using the H610 chipset. So this chipset also supports Intel 13th gen processors. So although this is a 12th gen, i3 in the future you can pop in a 13th gen i5 in here so this build is future proof but yeah more on our board here it's going to be using ddr4 and it does have wi-fi capability so that's good this is the micro atx form factor micro atx form factor is a bit smaller than the standard atx form factor so this is going to be a smaller build so let's go ahead and talk about our juice this is a 600 watt bronze rated power supply by eris game so yeah in the future if you want to upgrade your card 600 watts is going to support some good rtx cards by nvidia and some higher tier amd cards too so this build is only 500 bucks but it is future proof which is awesome because sometimes with budget builds you kind of slack on a lot of different departments where like you don't have much of a upgrade path but this build does have an upgrade path good price gonna get the job done and it will support a future graphics card upgrade the power supply and the power cable and the screws okay guys so now for our storage we're going with a 500 gigabyte crucial p3 m.2 ssd 500 gigabytes is enough storage to get some games in there but it is on the low side if you need more go ahead and beef it up to a terabyte or two terabytes we will want 500 because our budget for the ram you guys already know if you've been watching the channel class Classic Corsair Vengeance LPX kit, 16 gigabytes of RAM at 3200 megahertz. It's gonna be enough for our gaming. Our last essential component, our case. We went with a case by Montec, a brand that's a lot, well, unknown. This is a budget build, so we went ahead and went with a case that was from a brand that's unknown, like the cheapest possible, because we gotta get that budget to be 500. But anyways, yeah, some, some no name brand. We can care less about the brand. It's a solid case and watch what it offers for our money. So for the price of this case up on the screen, right now because it's got all the features of a case that just comes ready to go out of the box let me go ahead and open this up this case offers as you can see right there three pre-installed rgb fans in the front and one back here so it comes included with four fans we don't need to add any more fans to this they're already pre-installed which i love it means we do less building labor you know like the fans are already installed for us guys and you got the tempered glass side panel you got the good airflow with all the cutouts in the front of the case i mean what more could you want and for that price this is just a really solid 
solid case. The build quality, first impressions as well too, are really nice. Even as far as what the case itself has, right here we have obviously our power button and look, three USB ports, three. Good case, good case. And those are our essential parts and the total is gonna be up on the screen right now. And our second parts list is a bunch of optional components that are only for aesthetics. Let's go ahead and go over them. We have one of our brand Crater custom sleeve power supply extension cables. So why we use these is because instead of having the stock power supply cables on display in the front of our build, we have these beautiful extensions, which just make the build pop and look way more dope. It's not a night and day difference. It's like, cool. We match it to our Funko Pop. This Funko Pop here is for you Funko collectors out there. This one's a pricey one. This one's like a hundred bucks. Is the Call of Duty one all gillied up. It was just dope. It's green. It matches the extension cables that has the splash of green right there. And then we have our Crater RGB strip kit. This comes with two RGB LED strips, the cables we need for it, and strong magnetic attachments. So all the parts we're using for this build are linked in the video description. So you can pick these up on our site at craterhq.com. All the parts we're using for this build are linked in the video description. All right, so now we're gonna be jumping into our build guide. We've been opening up a sparkling cider this holiday season. We gotta wait for that to go down. But once again, happy 2024. Cheers. Also guys, we're running a sale on all Crater Tees at craterhq.com. All right, so first we're gonna be working with the motherboard. We're gonna get out the board, the IO shield, this bag with this screw to install our M.2 SSD. And if you're gonna be using Wi-Fi, we're gonna be getting one of these plates. One is not as long as the other. So we're gonna wanna get the one that's the longest, which is this one. And then we have the two Wi-Fi antennas. Let's get our CPU out of its box. Set the heatsink to the side. So when taking a look at our i3 processor, we're gonna find a golden arrow on the bottom left-hand side of it. It's really tiny, but it is right there. If we take a look at our CPU socket, we're also gonna find an arrow on the bottom left side as well. So we're going to pull this to the side, and the lever is gonna go up, and then we're gonna lift this. So now we're gonna line up the arrow of the CPU with the arrow on the socket. That's how we wanna line it up, and now we're just gonna hover it right over and drop it in. We can put this back down, but make sure this part is tucked in underneath this piece like that. And now we're going to push it down all the way. You're going to feel tension on this. That's normal. You're not breaking anything. And return it to its original position all the way down and tuck it in right there. And this thing just comes off. Now we're gonna get our stock heat sink out and we're gonna notice that it has pre-applied thermal paste back here. So no need to worry about applying that. We have four points on the board and all we're gonna be doing is lining up these four points with the four points on the board and, and then we're gonna clip it in by simply pushing down on these. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I'm lining it up correctly on the first drop so I don't smear my thermal paste too much. Sit it right on top. Get all of these into the points. And now we're gonna push down on one of them. So we're gonna push down with this one. There we go. Now push down on the one across. But you're gonna have to lift the board a little bit for it to go through. Just like that, I'm lifting it up with my fingers and I'm gonna push down with my thumb. There we go. And now we can move on to the other ones. Boom. Boom. Now we want to make sure that all of these went in all the way. So we're going to get our hand and put it behind our board, support our board. And we're going to push down on all four of them again, but with more force. That one's in all the way. This one more force is in all the way. And this one. Okay. Last one. All right. Looks like they were in all the way, but I just wanted to make sure. You can also make sure by turning the board around and seeing that all these points went all the way through. Just want to make sure that you attached it all the way. All right. Next, we're going to hook up the fan of the heatsink to the CPU fan header on our motherboard, which is right here. Done. Next, let's install our RAM sticks. So we want to pull back the levers of our RAM slots all the way. And now you want to line up the part of the RAM that is indented, with the RAM slot where it's not indented. So the vengeance text is going to be to the left side of the board. So we're going to put it into a slot. And once it's in, we're going to push down with both thumbs equal force. It's going to go in all the way and this lever will lift back up. Same thing for this one. Vengeance text on the left side of the board. Put it into the slot. All right, got it in there. Push down with both thumbs equal force and our RAM is installed. Next, the installation of our M.2. Let's open up this bag we got. So we got this out of the bag. This is a little standoff for our SSD. We're going to be screwing it into the first point on our board right here. I'm just gonna be using my fingers. And I got it in, but we're gonna finish securing it with a zero screwdriver. All right, and now we're ready to put in our SSD. We simply put it into here and then lay it on top of the standoff that we just installed. It's gonna look like that. Now it laid directly on there because this lab right here was already in the position that we needed it to be. It needs to be in this position. For example, if it was right there, the SSD won't go down all the way. Have it over on that side, lay the SSD on there. Still need to move it a little more. There you go, now the SSD fell. And this is what we used to secure the SSD. So then just push it down. This little slab right here holds down the M.2. It should look like that, guys. We're now ready to put our motherboard inside of our case. I'm gonna get the front and back panels off first. 
So in here, the only thing we want from here is this dust filter that's magnetic and is going to sit on top of the case right here, just like that. Wow. Now that I'm taking a closer look at the case, this is a very nice presentation. This is a very solid case. All right, guys, so now we wanna install our IO shield. I came with the motherboard. So we're gonna clip this in to the back of our case. We're going to put it inside and line it up. We're gonna make sure that these three circles are on the bottom and then just clip all the sides and pushing in. And all four sides clip through. Okay, so now we're ready to put the motherboard in. Now, when installing a motherboard inside a case, you wanna first make sure that all the motherboard standoffs inside the case line up with all the points of the motherboard. So as we mentioned earlier, this board is a micro ATX form factor and all the standoffs inside of here are already in the correct position for a micro ATX board. So we don't need to remove or add any standoffs. We're ready to just install it already. So go to the back of the case. We need to get our screws out, of course. They're in the hard drive cage, okay? And now we're ready to lay our case down. All right, so let's get our motherboard in here. And we wanna make sure that the wires of the fan make Make sure that these are not under the motherboard so just lift them up like that we want to line up the ports of the motherboard with the io shield first all right that's good and then we lay the board flat and then i'm going to line it up with the standoffs all right now i'm going to go to my screw bag that came with the case and i'm going to be using this screw to secure the board now we secure all six points and our motherboard is secure. We're gonna circle all the six points red. Okay, now we need to install the Wi-Fi if you're gonna be using Wi-Fi. So I'm screwing this thing right here with a zero screwdriver, the same one we use for them, that's SSD. So this thing was right here, and this is our Wi-Fi. Now we're gonna get this piece that came with the motherboard. So we need to connect the wires of this to this, and then the antennas will screw on to this piece. So we're going to install this first into the four PCI bracket on this case. I'm gonna unscrew this. Now this piece can lift up, but you know what? I'm just gonna remove this piece entirely right now. And I'll put it back on when the graphics card is installed actually. Okay, so we're going to get rid of the fourth bracket by pushing it in, but I don't want it to damage the motherboard right here. So we're just going to have to push it, but only little movements back and forth like that. We don't wanna just push it like this. I'm just going to pull it from the top like that. You can also take it off before you even put the motherboard. That would be easier actually. So now this thing is going to go right here and we're gonna secure it with a screw that came with the case. This one right here. So now, remove these protective things. Now we're gonna connect the wires right here. So we have the first wire. We have to line it up right on the thing and then push it in. I'm just gonna push it in with my nail. We have to make sure we line it up good or if not, it's not gonna go in there. All right, we line that up and then we push it in with our nail. Now the second one. I went ahead and unscrewed this. It is easier to line up with it not screwed into the motherboard yet. So I line it up and then push down with my nail. And there we go. Now I'm going to install this. All right, that thing's back in there. And now I'm gonna put this thing back in there. Be careful not to disconnect these right now. And then I resecure it. All right, now the Wi-Fi is installed. So our motherboard is fully installed now. Now it's time for us to install our power supply. I'm gonna go ahead and get these wires loose and let's lay our case down again. And we're going to unscrew two screws down here. And then one more screw right here. And then that fully releases our hard drive cage. So we can get it out of here because we're not going to be using hard drives in this build. Now we have more space in the bottom of our case for cable management. So when putting the power supply inside the case, make sure that the fan of the power supply is facing down. And we're going to slide it right into here. And we secure it with the screws that came with it. Screws also come with the case. Okay, cool. Now I'm gonna go ahead and find my big 24 pin power cable. It looks like this and I'm gonna hook up the extension cable to it. So now instead of this hooking up to the motherboard and being on display in the front of our build, this is gonna hook up to the motherboard and be on display in the front. It's gonna look way cleaner. I'm only gonna be using one power supply extension cable for our build here today because our graphics card, remember, doesn't need a PCI power cable. All right, guys, now it's time to hook up cables. We have a lot of cables here, but no biggie because we're gonna break them down into three groups and take it one cable at a time. So the first group of cables is all our power cables from the power supply that are gonna power things. Our second group of cables is all our case cables, which are gonna hook up the power button and the USB ports of our case to the motherboard. And then our third and last group of cables is all our fans and lighting. All right, guys, so let's jump into the power cables. First cable is our big 24 pin power cable. We wanna make sure that this clip right here clips back here. So we're gonna line it up straight and push it in. And there we go, it clipped. 
and then we combed it with the cable comb. There we go, it's looking good. Next power cable is on the top left of our board, our CPU power cable. It's labeled CPU, and again, we want the clip to clip on the top. I'm gonna line it up straight and push it until it clips. And it should look like that, it clipped on top, and it's in all the way. And that's it. Now moving on to our second group of cables, our case cables. First case cable is our HD audio cable. It only plugs in one way, all the way to the far left. It goes into that port right there. And the HD audio text, as you can see, is facing up. I'm pushing these wires out of the way, but make sure we don't disconnect them because then it's annoying to reconnect it. The next case cable is our USB 2 cable. We'll plug in right here. Also only goes in one way, this time with the USB text facing down. Cool. Now let's move on up here underneath our big 24 pin power cable. And here we're going to hook up our USB 3 cable. So notice how it has a hump right there. We want to line up that hump on the left side. So line it up straight and then push it. Okay, guys, last case cable down here. This is where we're going to plug in our JFP1 cable these little guys right here. I'm gonna throw a chart up on the screen to help us out. First cable we're plugging in, there's our power LED cable. The positive one has a plus on it. That's gonna go on the left side, the negative one on the right, and that's gonna hook up to the top row of pins, first and second pin. And it should look like that with the positive on the left. Next is our HDD LED cable. Again, we want the positive on the left, so we're gonna flip it and you see that little arrow? That is the positive. And this one is going to hook up into the bottom set of pins, first and second pins, right underneath our power LED cable with that arrow, aka positive on the left. Look like that. We hooked it up right underneath it. Last is our power switch. Positive and negative does not matter on this one. And this one hooks up to the top row of pins, third and fourth pins, right next to the power LED. And now we're ready for our final group of cables, guys, our fans and our lighting. So here we are in the back of our case. We're going to locate our fan controller. So the lighting of our four fans are hooked up to our fan controller. We need to now power it. I'm going to undo this tie. We have two cables here. This one right here is our SATA cable to power the fan controller. We're going to locate the SATA power cable from our power supply. Looks like this and hook it up to the fan controller. And now this cable right here is a three pin RGB cable. This only controls the lighting of our fans. Once we hook this up to our motherboard, all the lighting of all four of our fans are going to be hooked up to the motherboard. So let's go to the front of the case. And right next to JFP1, we're going to find a three pin RGB header right here. So this only goes in one way. And there we go. It should look like that. Next, we want to actually hook up the fan itself to the motherboard. So we're going to find all our four fans. They're already all hooked up in a chain. We're going to locate this. We now have to hook up this to the motherboard and then that will hook up all four fans to the motherboard. So I'm going to undo these ties right here and I'm going to disconnect this part right here real quick and reconnect it uh, just so I can get over this cable. I'm going to undo this tie as well. Now I'm doing all this so I can give myself more slack for this cable. I'm now going to wire it to the front of our case through the top of our 24 pin cable, just like that. Now that right there is a system fan header. That is where we need to hook up this cable to. All right. And now that that's hooked up, all the fans are hooked up to our motherboard. So this cable is to actually control the fans so they could spin. The cable we hooked up previously to this one was only for the lighting of the fans. Now I'm gonna install our RGB LED strip kit real quick. I made a tutorial on how to install this. Remember, this is optional, but it's really cool because it adds this big splash of light inside of your build. We're just gonna install these strips real quick. Time lapse. I'll link a video in the description as to how to install these with more detail. All right, guys, and now we have reached the final step, installing our RX 6400 graphics card. We're gonna go ahead and remove this protective. And now this card is going to be going into our PCI slot, but we need to make room for it. We need to remove the first and second brackets. So again, I'm gonna push in and then just pull it down so I don't have it scratch my motherboard. So to loosen this up more, we just have to wiggle it up and down, up and down. That loosens it, there we go. That's off. Same thing for the other one, up and down, just a little bit. I don't want it to damage my board here. And there we go, that loosens it. With this case, when we're removing these things, they're very close to these. So I do recommend that you remove the first, the second, and the third bracket before you actually put in the motherboard just to be extra safe and not damage your motherboard. So now we push this lever back and line up our card with the PCI slot and then push it in all the way. And there we go, that lever will lift back up. We're now going to secure it with two screws that came with the case. All right, and now we're gonna reinstall this piece. Looking good. And last, I'm gonna remove the protective film that was on our graphics card. 
All right, that's off. And we are done, guys. Now all that's left to do is install our Funko Pop and do some cable management, then put the panels back on and we're good to go. Time lapse. Make sure to remove all these metal wire ties, okay? You don't want this touching your motherboard. It could short something. There's a couple right here, just tying down the case cables. Just make sure you remove them. That came out sick. All right, guys, we're gonna turn on the lights. First boot up, all right. We're gonna flip the power button on, and here we go. And everything is on. All the fans are spinning, all the lights are on. This build came out sick. Go ahead and do the little peel. And there it is, guys. This build came out sick. Only 500 bucks. If you were following along and this is your first build, congratulations, man. For 500 bucks, it just looks awesome. And it's going to perform great, too. Look how clean it came out. Oh, my goodness. Dude, look at that. The green. That is the color we're always going to have it on. Green. That's what looks sick. A $500 build could look pretty good. That's clean. That's clean. It looks awesome, guys. And I can't wait to start playing on this, man. Seriously, let's install the games already and frag it up. But first, we need to install an operating system. Windows 11. I made a tutorial on how to install Windows 11 from a USB flash drive for free. That video is linked in the video description. And after we need to install our drivers to make sure everything's running good, I will also link a video in the video description on how to install all your drivers. Time to put this build to the test. Let's frag it up. Settings we're going to be using for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 Multiplayer and Warzone 2. 1080p for the quality settings. We have AMD FSR set to balanced. Here are the rest of the settings. And for our FOV, it's to the max 120. Let's do it. We're losing, but we're going to come back. We got thrown into a match that already started. Hey, Got the juggernaut! Oh crap, dude, that was close. What up, punk? You didn't expect the juggernaut behind you, did ya? We won, gentlemen. That's how you do it. Yeah! Performance was amazing. Next game. Settings for Warzone 2. 1080p res. Here are the rest of the settings. AMD FSR is set to balance. And here's everything else. The view 120. Let's do it. We are now entering the war zone. <laughs> oh my goodness, get out play, my guy. Get on this building. Oh my god, dude. Yeah, baby! Dude, that was my first match of the day. Heck yeah, bro. What a testify to this beast of a $500 gaming PC. Next game. Settings for the newly released, the finals. 1080p resolution. Here are the rest of the settings. FOV is set to the max. And let's do it. Holy crap, we got all the damn money, dude. We just need a deposit. Come on, get me in there. Get me in there. Yes, I'm in. Okay. Oh my goodness, no one's here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I hear people. They're probably everywhere, but we got it. Oh my goodness, dude. Are you serious? We're so lucky. Only right here, this game wants us to win. Yeah, the deposit is much more. Okay, 
Imagine if I wipe the team. Oh my god, I'm gonna wipe the team. No, you flame throw it! We're only winning by a thousand because of this team. Oh my god, look where the deposits spawn. Oh shoot, he's right there! We won! We came back at the end. Performance is solid, man. For a $500 build, Next game, settings for Halo Infinite, 90 FOV, 80% for the resolution scale. Here are the rest of the settings. The texture quality was set to medium. Let's do it. Here we go, dream team. God, we're getting you, we're gonna catch up, we're gonna catch up. Nice job to me. Watch out, dude! Oh, I am sorry, Timmy. Double kill! How the tides have turned! Oh! Assassination! Yeah! We won! Time. Triple kill time! Triple kill time! Triple kill! Alright team, man. bring it home already. Yeah, that was easy. We two old those kids. Performance was good. Next game. Settings for Fortnite. 1080p res. We have it on performance mode. For the resolution scale, it's set to 80. And here's the rest of the settings. Let's do it. Me and Banana Boy about to tear this lobby up! Hey, this thing feels so smooth, dude. We're getting 200 FPS on the planets. Wow, performance is good, guys. Wow, uh, Fortnite feels so smooth on this $500 build. That was dumb, that was dumb. Wow, oh, we totally interrupted the fight. Oh, he's dead too. Whoopsies, someone's definitely here, huh? Let's ruin this guy's day. No! Performance for Fortnite was super good though. Alright, let's move on to the next game. Settings for Valor and 1080p resolution. Here are the rest of the settings. Let's do it. Let's get this bread. Performance is good for Valorant though, I mean like, not surprised, Valorant is not a very demanding game. Definitely didn't win this one. Next game, settings for Siege, 1080p resolution, max FOV to 9D, here are the graphic settings, let's do it. Bro, why am I lagging? Bad. That was a bad drop. Sorry guys, we may have lost the battle, but we haven't lost the war. Oh, that's unlucky, boy. <laughs> Sucker. Get out of here, you punk. Oh my god. That's not good. Ash, don't be scared, man. Have some confidence. Good job. They're running up, they're running up. We're dominating in a lot of the other games in this video, to be honest. We lost the Siege one. It's okay, though. Next game. Settings for Apex Legends, 1080p resolution. We have here the rest of the settings. Let's do it. Wolf Squad. Let's go. Let's get this dub. Oh, we destroyed them. They shut down. Oh, we're dead. Yes! 
Oh, I'm on the knife. Uh oh, the other team just caught up. Yeah, <laughs> sucker. How we won. Nice. Performance is good. We got the dub. All right, guys. Next game. Settings for Counter Strike 2, 1080p resolution. Here are the video settings. FX is set to ultra quality for extra FPS. Let's do it. What you looking at, huh? boy? Bruh. Bro, this is where we come back. Oh my goodness! Yeah, let's go! That was a fun match. Performance was good. That is a wrap. Our $500 budget bill performed amazing. Thank you for watching till the end, guys. I appreciate all your guys' support. Comment down below what kind of future builds you want to see, what kind of prices, and what kind of parts combined. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.